Welcome to Through the Bible in a Year with Pastor John. We invite you to join us at 1 Oakley Avenue in North Providence, Rhode Island. This podcast is presented to you by The Way Ministries, supported by listeners like you. For donations, live videos, podcasts, and more, please visit www.thewayministriesri.org. Thank you and have a great day. Hi, everybody. Welcome to Through the Bible in a Year with Pastor John. So glad you could join me today to get a portion of God's Word. Today we're going to begin with day 114, April 23rd, 2 Chronicles 10 to 12. Rebellion against Rehoboam. Overview. Everything about Rehoboam is divided from his counselors to his kingdom to his hot attitude toward God. While 1 Kings recounted the predicament in which Rehoboam found himself, 2 Chronicles centers around the divine purpose behind it all, so the king paid no attention to the people. This turn of events was the will of God, for it fulfilled the Lord's message to Jeroboam through the prophet, chapter 10, 15. The result is open revolt from the ten northern tribes and the formation of two distinct national entities, Israel and Judah. After three years of outward compliance with God's law, Rehoboam once again shows his true colors by forsaking God and drawing away most of the people. At his death, these words provide the divine commentary on his life. But he was an evil king, for he did not seek the Lord with all his heart. Chapter 12, verse 14. Chapter 10, A Divided Opinion, verses 1 to 15. A Divided Nation, verses 16 to 19, Rehoboam's Political Life. Chapter 11, A Divided Heart. Chapter 12, A Defaced Temple, Rehoboam's Spiritual Life. Insight, Double Coverage for Good News, 2 Chronicles chapter 10, verse 16. The Chronicler does not recognize the kings of the Northern Kingdom. From his viewpoint, Only the descendants of David are legitimate rulers of the nation, even though it is sadly divided. Furthermore, the reigns of the eight good kings of Judah are given twice as much coverage as the twelve evil rulers. Insight. Exodus in reverse. Second Chronicles chapter 12 verse 5. Because the people had abandoned the Lord, he threatened to abandon them to an Egyptian king. 12.5. This would have been a reversal of the freedom and blessing God gave the Israelites at the Exodus. This reversal of the Exodus was further symbolized when during the Babylonian takeover of the Promised Land, many from Judah fled back to Egypt. 2 Kings 25 verse 26 2 Chronicles chapter 10 The Northern Tribes Revolt Rehoboam went to Shechem where all Israel had gathered to make him king. When Jeroboam, son of Nebat, heard of this, he returned from Egypt, for he had fled to Egypt to escape from King Solomon. The leaders of Israel summoned him, and Jeroboam and all Israel went to speak with Rehoboam. Your father was a hard master, they said, lighten the harsh labor demands and heavy taxes that your father imposed on us. Then we will be your loyal subjects. Rehoboam replied, Come back in three days for my answer. So the people went away. Then King Rehoboam discussed the matter with the older men who had counseled his father Solomon. What is your advice, he asked. How should I answer these people? The older counselors replied, If you are good to these people and do your best to please them and give them a favorable answer, they will always be your loyal subjects. But Rehoboam rejected the advice of the older men and instead asked the opinion of the young men who had grown up with him and were now his advisors. What is your advice? he asked them. How should I answer these people who want me to lighten the burdens opposed by my father? The young men replied, This is what you should tell those complainers who want to light a burden. My little finger is thicker than my father's waist. Yes, my father laid heavy burdens on you, but I'm going to make them even heavier. My father beat you with whips, 
but I will beat you with scorpions. Three days later, Jeroboam and all the people returned to hear Rehoboam's decision, just as the king had ordered. But Rehoboam spoke harshly to them, for he rejected the advice of the older counselors and followed the counsel of his younger advisors. He told the people, My father laid heavy burdens on you, but I'm going to make them even heavier. My father beat you with whips, but I'll beat you with scorpions. So the king paid no attention to the people. This turn of events was the will of God, for it fulfilled the Lord's message to Jeroboam, son of Nebat, through the prophet Ahijah from Shiloh. When all Israel realized that the king had refused to listen to them, they responded, Down with the dynasty of David. We have no interest in the son of Jesse. Back to your homes, O Israel. Look out for your own house, O David. So all the people of Israel returned home. But Rehoboam continued to rule over the Israelites who lived in the towns of Judah. King Rehoboam sent Adoniram, who was in charge of forced labor, to restore order, but the people of Israel stoned him to death. When this news reached King Rehoboam, he quickly jumped into his chariot and fled to Jerusalem. And to this day, the northern tribes of Israel have refused to be ruled by a descendant of David. Second Chronicles chapter 11, Shema Ahiah's prophecy. When Rehoboam arrived at Jerusalem, he mobilized the men of Judah and Benjamin, 180,000 select troops to fight against Israel and to restore the kingdom to himself. But the Lord said to Shema Ahiah, the man of God, say to Rehoboam, son of Solomon, king of Judah, and to all the Israelites in Judah and Benjamin, this is what the Lord says. Do not fight against your relatives. Go back home, for what has happened is my doing. So they obeyed the message of the Lord and did not fight against Jeroboam. Rehoboam fortifies Judah. Rehoboam remained in Jerusalem and fortified various towns for the defense of Judah. He built up Bethlehem, Etam, Tekoa, Bethzer, Soko, Adalim, Gath, Maresha, Ziph. Adorium, Lachish, Azekah, Zorah, Ayajalon, and Hebron. These became the fortifying towns of Judah and Benjamin. Rehoboam strengthened their defenses and stationed commanders in them, and he stored supplies of food, olive oil, and wine. He also put shields and spears in these towns as a further safety measure. So only Judah and Benjamin remained under his control. But all the priests and Levites living among the northern tribes of Israel sided with Rehoboam. The Levites even abandoned their pasture lands and property and moved to Judah and Jerusalem because Jeroboam and his sons would not allow them to serve the Lord as priests. Jeroboam appointed his own priests to serve at the pagan shrines where they worshipped the goat and calf idols he had made. From all the tribes of Israel, those who sincerely wanted to worship the Lord the God of Israel followed the Levites to Jerusalem where they could offer sacrifices to the Lord, the God of their ancestors. This strengthened the kingdom of Judah, and for three years they supported Rehoboam, son of Solomon, for during those years they faithfully followed in the footsteps of David and Solomon. Rehoboam's family. Rehoboam married his cousin Mahalath, the daughter of David's son Jeremoth, and of Abihel, the daughter of Eliab, son of Jesse. Mahalat had three sons, Jeush, Shemariah, and Zaham. Later, Rehoboam married another cousin, Makah, the granddaughter of Absalom. Makah gave birth to Abijah, Atai, Ziza, and Shelomit. Rehoboam loved Makah more than any of his other wives and concubines. In all, he had 18 wives and 60 concubines, and they gave birth to 28 sons and 60 daughters. Rehoboam appointed Makah's son, Abijah, as leader among the princes, making it clear that he would be the next king. Rehoboam also wisely gave responsibilities to his other sons and stationed some of them in the fortified towns throughout the land of Judah and Benjamin. He provided them with generous provisions, and he found many wives for them. Second Chronicles chapter 12. Egypt invades Judah. 
But when Rehoboam was firmly established and strong, he abandoned the law of the Lord, and all Israel followed him in this sin. Because they were unfaithful to the Lord, King Shishak of Egypt came up and attacked Jerusalem in the fifth year of King Rehoboam's reign. He came with 12,000 chariots, 60,000 horses, and a countless army of foot soldiers, included Libyans, Succites, and Ethiopians. Shishak conquered Judah's fortified towns and then advanced to attack Jerusalem. The prophet Shemaiah then went with Rehoboam and Judah's leaders who had all fled to Jerusalem because of Shishak. Shemaiah told them, This is what the Lord says. You have abandoned me, so I am abandoning you to Shishak. Then the leaders of Israel and the king humbled themselves and said, The Lord is right in doing this to us. When the Lord saw their change of heart, he gave this message to Shemaiah. Since the people have humbled themselves, I will not completely destroy them and will soon give them some relief. I will not use Shishak to pour out my anger on Jerusalem, but they will become his subjects so they will know the difference between serving me and serving earthly rulers. King Shishak of Egypt came up and attacked Jerusalem. He ransacked the treasuries of the Lord's temple and the royal palace. He stole everything, including all the gold shields Solomon had made. King Rehoboam later replaced them with bronze shields as substitutes, and he entrusted them to the care of the commanders of the God who protected the entrance to the royal palace. Whenever the king went to the temple of the Lord, the gods would also take the shields and then return them to the god room. Because Rehoboam humbled himself, the Lord's anger was turned away, and he did not destroy him completely. There were still some good things in the land of Judah. Summary of Rehoboam's reign. King Rehoboam firmly established himself in Jerusalem and continued to rule. He was 41 years old when he became king, and he reigned 17 years in Jerusalem the city the Lord had chosen from among all the tribes of Israel as the place to honor his name. Rehoboam's mother was Nama, a woman from Ammon. But he was an evil king, for he did not seek the Lord with all his heart. The rest of the events of Rehoboam's reign from beginning to end are recorded in the record of Shemaiah the prophet and the record of Iddo the seer, which are part of the genealogical record. Rehoboam and Jeroboam were continually at war with each other. When Rehoboam died, he was buried in the city of David. Then his son Abijah became the next king. My Daily Walk Here are some symptoms of a half-hearted love for God taken from the life of Rehoboam. Your words and actions promote division, not peace. You rely on your own strength rather than God's. You worship God only when it is expedient for you. You distort God's plan and purpose for the family. You acknowledge God only when you feel helpless. Rehoboam's self-serving indifference came to a sudden halt when God brought him face to face with death in the person of Shishak, king of Egypt. In humble helplessness, Rehoboam acknowledged his own wickedness and God's righteousness. Are you half-hearted in your love for God? Then clear the channels of communication with him, admit your waywardness, acknowledge his righteousness, and get back in step with him. Don't wait until you're staring death in the face to set things right. The more a person takes the needs of others to heart, the more he or she will take his or her own heart to God. That's so true, and that's great advice. That's all for today, my friends. It was great reading along with you. Keep up the good work, and God bless, and I will see you tomorrow, Lord willing. Peace.